Please stand for the call to worship. We are people who have been called to follow where God leads us. We are people who have been challenged to tell God's story to others. We are God's children who are invited to feast at the table of grace. The God revealed to us in the pages of scripture is a welcoming and inclusive God who directs us to love one another. We seek to remove all the barriers that keep us from that love. Come now to confess all that separates you from others and from God. Together, let us pray the prayer of confession. You walk among us, O Lord hoping we will see your face in the crowd. We confess that most of the time we are not looking, and when we do look, we are afraid of what we see. We close our ears and laugh it off when you call our names. When we are too wrapped up in our own concerns to recognize you, forgive us. When we are too certain, and there is no room for your mystery. Forgive us. We have locked our doors, our minds, and our hearts. Forgive us. Show us your face again. Teach us to see and to welcome you in. The good news is that Christ calls us to new life and enables us to begin again and again and again. Friends, believe in the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven.
As we prepare to hear the word of God, let us pray. Open our ears, O Lord, and our hearts and our minds, that we may hear from Scripture those things that will benefit our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Listen to the word of God as it's recorded in the Hebrew scriptures in the 50th Psalm, beginning at the first verse. The mighty one, God the Lord, speaks and summons the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God shines forth. Our God comes and does not keep silence. Before him is a devouring fire and a mighty tempest all around him. He calls to the heavens above and to the earth that he may judge his people. Gather to me, my faithful ones, who made a covenant with me by sacrifice. The heavens declare his righteousness, for God himself is judge. Hear, O my people, and I will speak. O Israel, I will testify against you. I am God, your God. Not for your sacrifices do I rebuke you. Your bird offerings are continually before me. I will not accept a bull from your house or goats from your fold. Mark this then, you who forget God, or I will tear you apart and there will be no one to deliver. Those who bring thanksgiving as their sacrifice honor me. To those who go the right way, I will show the salvation of God. The word of the Lord. I now invite the children to join me up here on the steps, whether in spirit, that extends to some of you, or in body. Hey, Joey, how about I come to you? That way you don't have to be in front of everybody. No. That's okay. You, we can talk to each other from back there if you want. How are you this morning? Good. She even speaks correctly. She's doing well. Okay. So my question for you today is, are you ever afraid? Yeah. What do you get afraid of? What, what do you get afraid of? Spiders. Spiders. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I don't mind spiders so much. Snakes kind of are a little, make me afraid. How about bees? Yeah, bees, definitely. On your forehead? That was a sneaky bee. Very much so. Wow. Yeah, they hurt. They hurt a lot. Did your mommy give you good kisses, though? Yeah. Well, are you ever afraid of the dark? Yeah. Well, I never was afraid of the dark, but I think this is why. Do you have a night light? Yeah. yeah? And what does the night light let you do? See in the dark, right? So maybe if you had to get up and go potty at nighttime, it's not totally dark and you can just get up and go because you can see just a little bit. Well, this is the one, one of the really cool things about God is that when we are afraid, or we can say when things are dark, God is like our nightlight. Isn't that cool? God is like our nightlight. And so 
our nightlight allows us to see good things and to make us not be afraid. Pretty neat, huh? I think God's pretty cool that God is always the light that is shining in us and around us, loving us and helping us to not be afraid. Cool. Will you pray pray with me? You want to repeat after me? Give me your hand. Okay, we're going to do it this way. Dear God, thank you for always shining in the darkness. and being our light when we are afraid. Amen. All right. Thank you, sweetheart. Our second lesson this morning comes to us from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 12. And like I said last week, um, our brother Luke often provides some very provocative texts. Um, He is concerned about what we use and how we use it in terms of the gifts, the money, the wealth that we have been given. And so last week, and of course this week, when the new associate pastor is here, she gets to preach on these things. Uh, And then in the fall, we will continually hear this theme from Luke. Um, So hear God's word for us this day. Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourselves that do not wear out, an unfailing treasure in heaven, where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, There your heart will be also. Be dressed for action and have your lamps lit, like those who are waiting for their master to return from a wedding banquet, so that you may open the door for him as soon as he comes and knocks. Blessed are those slaves whom the master finds alert when he comes. Truly, I tell you, he will fasten his belt and have them sit down to eat and he will come and serve them. If he comes during the middle of the night or near the dawn and finds them so, blessed are those slaves. But know this, if the owner of the house had known the hour that the thief was coming, he would, have not, he would not have let his house be broken into. So also, you must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In 2010, uh, I was living in Columbus, and our house uh, was broken into, not once, but twice, in three weeks. So, now, we didn't live in the greatest neighborhood. And mind you, one of the police officers, I think the second time, said to us, well, you probably shouldn't be living in this neighborhood. Your house looks too nice. Okay, well, none of us, no matter where we live, should ever have fear where we live. Now, in those two robberies, we lost a lot of things. I didn't think we had much in our 1,000-square-foot house, but when things get taken, you actually add up those things. It's a lot of money. Now, they took our TV, of course, all of Jason's guns, most of which had been passed down from family, a few that were antiques, all of our electrical equipment, DVDs, iPods, computers, and all in all, it was over $10,000. Well, if you ever wonder if you're too attached to your things, have someone steal a lot of it, and you will find out what you truly are attached to. Those break-ins forced us to realize what was important to us and what we valued. Well, luckily, my treasures are mostly found in books. I had a lot of Bibles there, and none of those were stolen. And the street resale value on those books are not very great. But regardless, when someone takes 
valuable and memorable things from you, it's really awful. It leaves you feeling violated, exposed, and vulnerable. Yet Jesus says, do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Our text talks about being watchful and being ready for when Christ returns. It emboldens us not to play stock in the treasures of this world, but to look to and trust in God, who offers us so much more. Do not be afraid, but be ready, for we will not know the day or the hour. I, for one, often have mixed emotions about this being ready for Christ to return, watchful waiting. It's been over 2,000 years already. Is it actually going to happen? I mean, in all honesty, none of us really spend much time thinking about being ready or how to be ready for when Christ returns. We spend more time thinking and acting how to protect what is ours than we do on anticipating the fulfillment of God's promises. Yet Jesus says, Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Now, in our Presbyterian Christian tradition, we believe that the life to come will be a material world. We believe that there will be a new heaven and a new earth where all of what we know is transformed as it is made whole in Jesus. So the trick for us is not to think of material possessions as bad or that having valuable and meaningful things is wrong. Rather, it's where our gaze is placed, what we look for, what we look to for security, for hope, for joy. But our gaze, unfortunately, most of the time, is unable to combat and overcome our cultural context, where more is better, investments create security, we care more about what we and others look like than our faithfulness to God and how we live our own lives. For without surrounding ourselves with things, we feel vulnerable and we feel exposed. Unsure of what others will think of us, unsure of what we will think of ourselves if we didn't have them. We have to want to know and experience God's kingdom and trust that what God has to offer us, what God is offering us, is enough to sustain us, like wholeness and healing, forgiveness, hope, right relationship with God and with one another. When our trust is in God's love, and I'm sure all of you have experienced this at one time or another, we are able to see glimpses, those holy and sacred glimpses and reflections of the kingdom in our midst and receive the richness of God's blessing in those moments. Jesus says, do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. It is God's desire, says the text, that God gives us the kingdom which is far better, far richer and far fuller than anything we can imagine. God desires to bless us, perhaps with something that we may not even consider a blessing, the promise of the life to come, the glimpses of it here when we're able to put our focus on the things beyond. Being connected to and in relationship with God is better than anything we could own here on earth. We can do more than what we've ever possibly imagined that we could do. But we won't unless we change our lives from this to this. Do not be afraid, little flock. For it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. 
Talking about our wealth, our financial security, is a very personal thing. But faithfulness to God and participating in God's kingdom here on earth challenges each of us to reflect on where our hearts are. Do we long for joyful reunion with God, seeking glimpses of God in this world? Are we willing to let go of more than what we have because our real treasure and blessing is goodness beyond measure? Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. A good friend of mine and I made a pact before she graduated from law school. She's one of those people who was really, really smart. No common sense, but very smart. And she did well in law school. And when she graduated, she is going to be working for one of the top law firms in the nation. And she, at the same time, she valued things in God's kingdom. And she knew without some accountability, and she was single at this time, she wouldn't be able to live the way that she believed was faithful discipleship. She was going to make a lot of money right out of school, working a lot. And she knew herself well. And even growing up in a frugal Dutch community and family that she did, she knew that she wouldn't be able to overcome the temptations of money and the life that she could lead with it. She made me swear that I would talk with her and challenge her if I saw her straying from the lifestyle that she believed God was calling her to lead. My friend Jane knew that she couldn't do it alone. Her step was to have someone journey with her, helping her see and live with treasures not stored in this world. How do we Keep check on our treasures here. Not putting stock in them, but using them for God's good purposes while we are here. How do we approach God's kingdom? Not like this, but like this. Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. God desires to bless us, to bless us with eternity, with perfection, with meaning, with abundant love. Our treasure is not what we can hold in our hands, but what lasts forever. It's being so thirsty and receiving a glass of cold water and drinking it, and it never ends. It's hearing a musical piece and seeing heaven open before your eyes with its tantalizing harmony. Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. So here we are, all of us, waiting, waiting for God's kingdom to come, and we still have to live. The challenge is how we live with feet in both worlds. Not putting too much stock in one that will eventually be gone and knowing that one is so much better that we can never imagine what it is. Where we will know and be known and be the people that we are intended to be in this time and in this place. How do we live like this? instead of this. I'm ending with a poem that illustrates the tension in our lives between these two worlds. One kingdom that embraces us while we wait, and one that fulfills the hopes of our hearts with true love and peace. It's titled, Something in Us That Believes, by Alan Webster. Lord, There is something in us that believes, that wants to fly beyond tangible, the measurable, the known. There is also something earthbound, mired in past disappointments and what our parents call reality. Released, 
We would be free to discover our wildest dreams, to seize the golden and fleeting opportunity to boldly claim all that is best and holy and pure. Bound. The grinding necessity for finding cause and effect, for making ends meet, for adding up the logic, can blind us to the miracle of every day. At one and the same time, Lord, we want how we want both the faith of a child gazing in wonder at the rainbow-rimmed puddle on the driveway and the searing drive of the person demanding who demanding to know who hurt the other. We want the trust that asks for the best from our loving Father and the rigor of mind that will not be deceived by false hope. The gentleness of spirit that enables us to see the miracle and an honesty of insight that checks it out. As we balance these poles, Lord, we ask for both a gentle cynicism that guards us from credulity and a tender insight that humbly acknowledges we are often blind in a world far more colorful than we can ever know. Jesus says, Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Amen.
receive this morning's offering, let us give of our life and of our labor to God. Let us pray. Blessed are you, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have these gifts to share. Accept and use our offerings for your glory and for the service of your kingdom. Blessed be God forever and ever. Amen. figure it out. People of God, this is the table of God, our friend, our leader. Come to this table, you who have come often, and for you for whom it has been a while. Come, you who have much faith, and you who desire more. Come, you who have tried to follow Jesus. Come, you who have failed. Come, you who hunger and thirst for a deeper faith, for a better life, for a fairer world. Come, it is Christ who invites all of us here. Come and be nourished by God. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. generous love and care. We're not perfect, holy God, and more often than not we turn from your ways and 
follow our own desires and comfortable pleasures. And yet, in your great mercy, you do not reject us. But instead, over and over again, you come to us and you offer us newness of life and a hope for a future. So now with Christians in all times and places, we forever sing to the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We thank you for Jesus Christ, your son, O God. He lived as one of us, knowing joy and sorrow. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, opened blind eyes, sat at table with outcasts and sinners, and proclaimed the good news of your liberating kingdom to the poor and needy. It is at this table we know Jesus' faithfulness in saving us. For every time that we eat the bread, our brokenness is made whole. Every time we drink from the cup, we receive unceasing grace. Every time we come to this table, we know that mystery called faith. Christ has died. Christ, Christ will come again. Holy God, send your Holy Spirit upon this simple bread and the cup. Gifts from creation which mysteriously grace us with your life fed here with your presence within and around us, may we go forth to fill the lives of all those who are hurt and need care. Having tasted the cup of joy, may we bring hope to those parched by hardship and loneliness. We pray all of this in the strong name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, and as our Savior has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. On the night that he was betrayed, Jesus took bread, gave thanks to God. He broke the bread and he gave it to his disciples saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then after the supper, he took the cup and he said, this cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do it in remembrance of me. For every time that we eat this bread, and we drink this cup, we are proclaiming the saving death of our risen Lord until he comes. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. salvation for you too.
salvation. Cup of salvation. Cup of salvation. Loving God, that through communion you knit us together into one body, the body of Christ, having gifts that differ according to the grace given us. Help us to use them to build up one another in love, serving as Christ's hands and feet in the world. Amen.
stand also with you. Peace be with you, Jesus. Peace be with you. People of God, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the power of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forever. And go out into the world with peace. Have courage. Hold on to what is good. Return to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Honor all people. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.